Hi, my name is Dana Vaughn, and I'm, it's in my privilege to be here today with our special guest. Before we go into our heartbreaking topics, I would like all of us to spend some time to send our prayer and our love to all the victims who have been and are going through human trafficking experience. I would like to introduce our audience to a very special guest, Chief Deputy District Attorney Summer Stephan. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and how do you have the courage to do what you do every day? Dana, thank you for having me here this morning. It's very special and very special to talk to our very special Vietnamese community about these important issues. Um, you know, I've devoted my life to victims of crime and especially the most vulnerable victims, those special victims that are sexually abused, um, that are looked down by society because they're considered to be the lower level people that nobody sees, for kids who are exploited. Uh, that's been my special passion. And it's, I've had the privilege to work as a deputy district attorney in San Diego for 27 years. Oh my. I really want to know how can you handle or even do the thing that you do every day and you could still be a parent to your kid and to feel safe when you come home? I think the reason that I do it is that um, it really matters to the victims and I get so much inspiration from them. You know, um, people have so much courage. We look and we, society tries to tell us who the heroes are, but really the heroes are often really the quietest people. And they're people that have suffered and have overcome that adversity. So I draw my strength a lot from these victims that I help, that we prosecute their exploiters and we, we lock them away when we protect our victims. And then a few years down the line, when they become more independent, when the community surrounds them with love and with care, they thrive. I have a victim recently that is just graduated from San Diego State University. She, was, she had been a human trafficking victim since age 13, sold on the streets, sold in different hotels to, for prostitution, night after night, day after day. We were able to get her out of that at 16 years old through a police operation that rescued her. And now she's in her 20s and she's graduated from college and she is now helping other kids that were in her situation. She's trying to help give them the courage to get out. And I want to go into a little bit more about the topic that we talked today. Um, all the number that imprinted my brain right now, the 810 million mm -hmm. annually business that actually in San Diego. Yes. It's, it's, it's scary as it's sad, but it's actually happening every single minute that we live in right now. So could you like to go a little bit into uh, the recent study and how big it is yes. that we're talking about? So human trafficking uh, at its very core is the exploitation of vulnerable people for sex or for labor. So that's the simplest definition. And we studied the sex exploitation aspect, the sex trafficking, which normally is in prostitution. It's young girls mostly, although there's some boys that are used for prostitution by gangs and organized crime. When we studied it, we found out that it's a lot bigger than we even thought. And why is that? It's because it hides in plain view. The victims don't speak out and they're afraid to call police. This is why I'm so thankful to you, Dana, for bringing light to this because if there are victims out there, we want them to know there yes. is help. Yes. So the study showed that there are about 3,400 victims yearly and that they're mostly young girls, 15 to 16, that enter are used by gangs for prostitution. That's the age that the average age, so some are even younger than that. And we have rescued some 13 year olds. And that the profit margin, which is what drives this industry, it's about greed, about gangs wanting to make money off the backs of young girls. 
is at $810 million. It is that profit that drives the industry. But you know what that really means is there are people out there that are buying these it's kits. Supply and demand. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So if you don't have the demand for it, then you they can never make that big of a profit. So exactly. For me, it's I come here today and I have a mixed feeling. Whether should I be angry, or sad, or worry about the life of our children and our loved ones that that we don't even think about each day that they actually all of us a victim can be the victim of human trafficking am i correct and you said it so perfectly and that there are no families that are immune these are our children and we need to really understand and build our knowledge so that we can protect our kids um, it is a supply and demand and it's very important that not only do we talk to our girls about protecting them, about building resiliency. But we need to talk to our boys from a young age about the value of respecting another person's body and healthy relationships so that they don't grow up to buy people like their products. The reason that no family is immune is because of the social media. It's the phones, the iPads, the computers. I tell parents all the time, it isn't the predator that is kidnapping our kids, putting them in the back of a car. Those cases do happen, but most of the cases are- We actually are set that up for them. Exactly. Yes. Most of the cases are somebody who reaches right into mm -hmm. your kid's bedroom mm -hmm. on their phone, invites them to a party, offers them um, clothing, uh, jewelry, offers them love and attention, and it's all really lies to use them for uh, human trafficking. My next question to you is, what is our government currently doing about slavery? If you can elaborate that for us. So we are doing a lot and the, the nice thing, and I'm so proud and thank you for the compliments, but it's really the entire team coming together. We have an amazing team and we are setting the standard for how we combat human trafficking. We're coming at it from every end. We have an organized human trafficking task force, 24 hours a day, looks for victims, reclaims them, searches the internet, works with the Center for Missing and Exploited Children, combining all our, our forces together to stop this plague. We recently did a fantastic operation, Reclaim and Rebuild, where 38 traffickers and buyers were held accountable and arrested. We're also doing a lot to prevent in terms of educating our kids, in terms of educating parents, educating doctors and nurses on the signs of trafficking so that we can help rescue these victims. So we have become a place that gets visited on a monthly basis by other counties, other states, and other countries to see how we're combating human trafficking. But we need to keep going because as long as there's one victim out there, one young girl that may be in a hotel right now being sexually abused for money, money that's gonna line the pockets of the trafficker, we can't stop. You know, that's the key knowledge like I quote it from you and I, I say that to my kid all the time, knowledge is power. Yes. And, and for, for our children, like you said, they need to know and we as a parent to aware to educate our children about all the things that could happen in the real world. So what kind of sign could we, should we look for if an individual is being trafficked? So there are a lot of signs, and these, some, many of these apply to both labor trafficking and sex trafficking. We, whenever you see one of the biggest things that is a red flag is a younger girl with an older male that looks like they're not related, it's not a parent, there's something that indicates control, either touching the shoulder, holding, making it as if you are really controlling the actions of this human being. Uh, hotels and motels are the number one place for sex trafficking. So noticing a younger girl with an older male, noticing somebody that doesn't have a suitcase but rather have has their belongings in a plastic bag, mm -hmm. 
someone who's not really speaking for themselves and when they speak they're really referring to things that sound like money and like sexual language that the child shouldn't be speaking of tattoos that indicate money signs for a parent i always tell them if you see that your child has an item that you didn't buy for them ask questions and when the child tells you i borrowed it from a friend ask more questions because we know that these traffickers play the Romeo. They try to bring gifts, to give attention, to fool our kids into thinking that they're there to help them, to make them famous, to put them in a music video. So look for items that don't belong to your kid. Look for change in behavior. And of course, teenagers change behavior all the time. So it's not just one sign. It's taking the signs together and trust your instincts that if you see that there's a change, there's something wrong, don't stop. Ask questions. Also, I tell parents, don't allow your kids to have a password that you don't know because these objects, these social media devices, they belong to the family, to the parents. And so have an agreement, a contract with your kid that if you want to have the privilege of using these items, then you have to respect our home and allow me to look at them for your protection. So also really talk to kids about, and this is the biggest thing I see, we talk so much to our kids about strangers, yeah. stranger danger, but we know that over 80% of predators are in the circle of trust of our kids. Definitely. Yes. And not just in sex trafficking, mm -hmm. in child molest, in sexual abuse. We want to give our kids permission to tell us when things go wrong by someone they know. So they don't feel that they're ashamed that they did something wrong, but rather that they can come to us and say, you know, I was fooled, I did this. Because here's what the traffickers do. They put the kids in compromising positions. Mm -hmm. They will give them drugs, alcohol, take pictures of them, and then threaten them to expose those photos on Snapchat or on other media. So if the kid knows they can go to their parent and the parent won't shame them, but will say, let's see what we can do to help you. The police are here to help you. Let's solve this together. They will come to the parent more for help. A lot of children that you rescue how many percent that be able to overcome the experience that they went through and become college graduate and be able to set an example and help others? Could you be able to answer that? You know, the, there are many, but, but you're right that there are those kids that will get go back to that lifestyle because all they know is abuse. They don't yes. come from, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, parents that love them. In fact, all they've experienced is abuse and domestic violence and seeing unhealthy relationships. So it takes a lot longer and sometimes it actually takes two or three times to rescue them before we can really re-engage them as a free whole human being. But we have a lot of success stories. and. You make an excellent point that, you know, where you have a parent that's concerned, that kid has a better chance of yes. getting out mm -hmm. of it. But for the kids out there or any even adult who wants to get out and wants help and knows that they're being abused either for sex or for labor. For example, we know that a lot of um, women are being used in illicit massage parlors mm -hmm. yes. and are being used for labor 20 hours a day or are used as maids. They're offered a job that turns out to be as a nanny, but instead it turns out to be slave work where they're being made to sleep in a basement. They're not being paid. People need to know they have rights in this country and that we're here to protect them. They, everybody, all of your audience, we want them to enter the human trafficking hotline. They can confidentially call for help and resources. And what is the hotline number? It's 888-3737-888. So 888-3737-888. And also there's a text number, which is B free, which is 233-733. This human trafficking hotline is connected with our local resources. So they'll be able to tell a victim 
where to go, who to call, how to get shelter, how to get food, and how to get police help if that's what they want. You know, I, I read a study and they said 20,000 slaves that currently under the age of 18 in the United States. The average age is 13 years old. 80% of those children are girls. Mm -hmm. And 80% of those girls are being in slavery right now, either for sex or for anything yes. that we don't want to get into. Yes. Um, Emperor, girl like Emperor. Another thing that is, is horrifying when I read it is that girl like Emperor have the life expectancy between seven to 10 years. Yes. From the time that they've been abducted to from the time that they've been abducted and to the time that they started enslavement. Can you comment on that for me? So there is a myth, a misconception that girls and women go into prostitution mm -hmm. as a choice. And But what little girl ever grows up and says, I want to be enslaved all my life. I want to be sold my body like a product. That's a myth. We know that these girls begin at a very young age because they're recruited by gangs they're and by traffickers. Right. They're already, yes. so even when they become adults, this is the only life they know. They, know. they don't have a choice. Yes. But prostitution is not like pretty woman. It's, there is no Richard Gere pulling up in a limo and taking the girl to Tiffany's. It is a life of perpetual abuse. And these girls, um, end up dying at a very young age, there's an extremely high rate of suicide. They're the number one target for serial killers who think that they're the throwaway of society, and so they think they can use their sadistic uh, murderous schemes on these young women. They also have 12 times the numbers for health diseases, such as inflammatory diseases and AIDS and other infectious diseases. So the reason they die so young is because it is a huge health risk, both mentally for the trauma they suffer and physically for the dignity of their body. So, so this is the society needs to set aside this myth that it's a profession. It's the worst form of oppression. It's not a profession to be used for prostitution. What is the percentage of rescue from the amount of all the children that are being trafficked in? A too small of a percentage, Dana, because the number one obstacle that we have in rescuing more kids isn't the will to do it. We're all here ready to help. It's the fact that the traffickers brainwash the victims, whether in sex or labor, to think that police and that government is not there to help them to think that they're going to be the ones who are going to be in trouble, especially workers that come to this country on H1, H2 visa, work visas. The traffickers make them believe that they're going to be deported, that they're the ones that are going to be in trouble with immigration. They don't understand and they convince them that they don't have their own rights, uh, both citizens and uh, non-citizens and it's very important that they recognize that they have rights and that we're here to protect them so so this is why this is so important that you're putting out this message and for your community to talk to each other and to know that there are resources and there are not just me but a whole team and law enforcement and many agencies that are here to help them if you have any other question, please uh, go to uh, the information that we have underneath our screen about the phone number, who you can contact. But thank you so much for being here thank today with so us. Much. And thank you for everything you've done for the community and continue doing for the community. But before I end the show, I know that um, uh, District Attorney uh, Bonnie um, Dumenis will st resign from a 15 year of her career in the District um, Attorney Office. Do you um, think about running for that position if it's available? Yes, I, I, I have announced that I'm running for district attorney. I've devoted 27 years in serving the community, and I look forward to the trust of the community, hopefully, in electing me so that I can continue to step up our efforts to protect victims of human trafficking, to protect women and 
people from being abused in domestic violence, also to protect our elderly population that is being uh, abused financially with scams and physically abused. I, those are my priorities and they're things that I look forward to advancing in the future. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with us today and thank you, Summer, for being here with us. Um, I hope that the information will be really valuable for you about human trafficking. And if you have any question, there will be a phone number underneath the screen for you to call. And so thanks much. again. And thank you. Have a great day.